So many women think they have completed their family and that they're done having children and so they decide to get a tubal ligation. Um, oftentimes they're young at that time and then maybe that relationship uh, does not work out and they meet a new husband and have a new relationship that they want to have uh, children with and there's a very strong drive with couples uh, to have uh, children with their current uh, partner even if uh, they have children from a former relationship so I see this quite a bit um, so they'll come and see me and say okay what are my options after I've had a tubal ligation um, how can I have more children and I'll tell them that you know there's the tubal reversal surgery and then there's also in vitro fertilization these options both have merits uh, pros and cons um, they uh, really the, the procedure that's chosen for the patient should be tailored to that individual. Um, so I like to get a good history, uh, preferably get the operative report from the prior tubal ligation, and then go over with them what is the best option for that specific person. Um, in general, uh, tubal reversal patients, or in general to be a good candidate for a tubal reversal, um, one needs to still be of a young maternal age, so ideally less than 35, have a good number of eggs, and um, have tubes that were uh, ligated or uh, tied uh, or cut in the mid portion of the tube so that there's still um, other fallopian tube that I can put back together because there's scar tissue that has to be resected during the tubal reversal process uh, involving the fallopian tube and then the healthy fallopian tube segments have to be put back together. So I need to see from the operative report how much tube was removed, um, what method was used. Some people have their tubes are burned and cauterized uh, and then other people they just have a portion of their tube uh, removed and so some of these procedures uh, allow me to put the tubes back together. Other ones make people ineligible to have a tubal reversal. But the good news is you don't have to have fallopian tubes to have a baby. IVF circumvents this process um, and allows us to help people get pregnant who've had their tubes completely removed or have had a, a tubal ligation. The IVF process involves stimulating the ovaries and um, taking eggs out of the woman and vaginally with a small uh, minimally invasive procedure, much less invasive than doing a tubal reversal, and um, making embryos in the lab, and then putting an embryo uh, into the uterus by way of the cervical canal. So we just take a catheter and put it through the cervix into the uterus and deposit it, and no tubes are needed. Women that are better candidates for IVF are those who um, may have a lower number of eggs, because then time is the essence. Because if people have a high number of eggs, if they do a tubal reversal and it doesn't work, there's still some time to allow them to go through doing IVF, and that holds true for maternal age also. Women who are older than 35, time is more of the essence and they really should think about IVF. That being said, patients who are younger with more eggs have the highest pregnancy rates um, with IVF also. So I'm kind of biased towards IVF. I think uh, it's the better uh, technology that's available. Um, it does allow people to preserve their fertility if they have surplus embryos. It also allows people to avoid the risk of ectopic pregnancy, which is really a big concern for women who've had um, tubal ligations in the past. The other thing to remember is that um, with a tubal reversal, one has to wait three months after the surgery uh, to allow um, sperm to be in the vicinity so they have to use some sort of protection so that the uh, tubes are allowed to heal, inflammation can go down and then they can start trying and in general it takes 6 to 12 months after people start trying to conceive a pregnancy after a tubal reversal. The IVF process for comparison is about 3 months uh, to make embryos and then to do the embryo transfer.